Hi, everybody, and welcome back to yet another cracking edition of the Map Brown Show. This is the Secrets of Fail series where we're talking to entrepreneurs and CEOs and founders all about the epic business failures. And with us uh, in the hot seat today from an AI company, apparently uh, it's the world's first emotionally intelligent AI, uh, Million Ways. And the founders on the line with me, uh, Max and Martin. Guys, welcome to the show. Thanks so much, Matt. Great, great to be here. Thanks awesome, everyone. brother. And uh, we're you. brothers, I should say. Uh, <laughs> we're doing two people in that seat today. All right, uh, Martin, let's uh, maybe start with you. Let's kick off with the elevator pitch. What exactly are you building over there at millionways.me? Yeah, right now, uh, AI is a hot topic. Many people talk about AI, but it's usually generative AI. So AI that generates something, text or videos or pictures. Our AI actually understands something. And there's, uh, from my perspective, the future, like the next step is understanding people's behavior, people's personality. And that's exactly what we are doing. So um, based on science, we developed it for actually long before the AI hype started um, in Germany uh, for uh, understanding people in a scalable way. And that's what we do based on text, by the way. So the only thing we need is text. We could use this podcast and just uh, analyze the three of us. So Max, uh, from a technical perspective, how would that actually work? Like, would you scan like Matt Brown Show's YouTube channel and then use that to create a sort of a archetypal pro like you know personal assessment or profile of like you know me based on the content that i'm producing like how would that actually work uh yes that's exactly what we could do uh we can parse any uh text uh, from video audio or just from emails or text or communication um, and determine a very good picture of the person's uh, personality what drives them their motivation their emotions uh, their characteristics are they more of a detail oriented person or not uh, all of these different values we can extract only from language um, and since most people have a lot of language uh, online uh, you in the form of these videos for example we can uh, immediately um, do that hmm. very very in interesting case. that's so cool yeah i mean i think everyone's going to have their own personal ai like that's that's where we're going right and i think to have that personal ai understand you you need a base of data content or whatever languaging to train it on um and so if you're not producing content <laughs> your ai is gonna suck <laughs> uh, that's funny uh but uh that's a topic for another day but I, I love this idea i think it's very very cool um so look let's get into the meat and the potatoes of, of this episode um Matt, what is your epic story of failure today uh, yeah, so I can I can start diving into this um, as as a founder, uh, especially from for the startup space. Uh, sometimes it can get difficult betting on the correct people. In our case, even betting on the correct country, <laughs> to be honest, because we we originated in Germany. A uh, lot of solid research and science, which was good backing, but um, you eventually hit that uh, cusp of turning this into a product, turning this into a business and growing it as fast and as ambitious as possible. And that's where you have to meet the right um, people, the right network, the right investors, the right partners. And uh, we, we have had some success, of course, um, but also some failures uh, with certain people that didn't live up to the expectations that we had originally with working with them. And sometimes you can get caught up into, into uh, some narrow uh, space uh, and just get lost in a rabbit hole and lose a little bit of time, which is, this is the most crucial uh, thing as a startup, uh, losing time, especially in these high tech uh, fields like AI right now. Uh, you have to keep this momentum. Uh, you have to keep growing and keep uh, charging ahead. And um, wasting time is, I think, the biggest failure that you can do and that we also experienced um, here and there. Mm. So, um so Martin, what do you mean by, or what did, what do you guys mean by when you say you bet on the wrong country? Because the people thing makes sense, right? Uh, absolutely. But when you say betting on the wrong country, like what was the reason for that? Yeah, and also it, it shouldn't sound like uh, other people are responsible because the founders are always responsible, right? And yeah. uh, we we wanted to um, execute fast. Uh, and as a founder, the, the most important thing you have to um, do and you have to be able to do is making the right decisions. And um, when you ask about the country, um, I don't want to blame Germany. Obviously, we had a great time. We had a great uh, science phase there. But for certain things, for example, future technologies, um, we have a, 
much uh, more open uh, market in the US uh, and also the mindset is just very different. Um, and wasting time is actually to not make the right decision to go where you have to go and also um, meet the right people. Like uh, if you if you have people that don't execute, it's it's your fault, right? I mean, we we uh, we made these decisions and then we end up with a team that's not productive and also not happy. So um, mm -hmm. this is this is epic, actually. Yeah, because you don't realize that. Yeah, yeah, it's absolutely true. Hey, so um, so let's get into the the lessons here. So what did that whole experience uh, teach you guys? Uh, let's stick with you, uh, Martin. Uh, yeah. Um, oh, yeah. I, I mean, funny thing, we are an emotional intelligent AI, right? We do personality profiles. So we w should have been able to identify the right people, and we didn't do that. So the, the, the first learning was use what we have, because um, we actually, it, it's often like that, right? The therapists are sometimes the most sad people. And in our case, it's like uh, we, we have this, this thing, and we made the wrong decision. So... Um, we actually learned like uh, doing the assessment as early as possible um, and also uh, really, really be, be careful that, that everybody's motivated like intrinsically because otherwise you end up with, you have to push people and that's not, that's not how it should be because they should be proactive, right? Mm, yeah, absolutely true. Um, Max, what do you want to add to that? What did you learn from that experience? Yeah, uh, absolutely. I can I can add that um, there were also a lot of, lot of cultural differences that we had to bridge coming from Germany, of course. Um, uh, this country, the U.S., coming here, uh, it is very motivating, of course, and people are more open to tech and business growth and uh, and uh, capitalism and all of that. But um, what we have learned very early on is distinguish between those who um, talk a lot and distinguish between th the others who also execute and deliver and help really help and really add value and this is a, this is a learning that we had to go through um also using our uh, personal personality profiling early on as martin said of course and now uh, i think we're in a good spot of identifying who is the right fit who can we add to our team that really adds value drives us is intrinsically motivated themselves because this is ultimately what drives them to to help us and to really add value, and this is uh, this is the biggest learning that we have gone through, and um, yeah, that's what we live by right now. Mm -hmm. I just, could, I, could I add something? Or yeah, I'm, man, go for it. Go for it. Just, just because yeah, sure. Because it's also about uh, learning about yourself. And, and I, for example, I learned that I'm not a good leader, which is actually interesting because mm -hmm. I'm the founder, and I always thought that uh, that I'm a good leader because I love to communicate, and um, I'm probably. Uh, I look excited usually, I guess. So I, I'm good at motivating people, um, and uh, and I'm empathetic. And I thought these three things make me a good leader, and that's not the case because uh, I I was always too fast, and I was always not not like empathetic. Also means like um, picking the people up where they are right now, and and, and they and I lost a lot a lot of people because I didn't do that. So this is also something I learned about myself that I'm actually not 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 in every aspect a good leader. Mm. Uh, but nobody oh, yeah. is right. So no one's perfect. And I think the, I was also the same. Like when I had, when I've, I mean, I've done 14 startups in the last 25 years, you know, I had multiple exits, lots of failure and stuff. And I remember the first few, I was a complete dictator. Like I used to just fuck people up because I had a very specific leadership. For me, it was like, we're going to war every day and you must like over deliver and, you know, blah, 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 blah. blah. And, you know, God help you if you didn't do what you were expected to do um, and as i've matured i've learned that you know there's there's different ways to lead you know what i mean um, and more effective ways to lead sometimes you have to dish out the hair dryer treatment you know but not all the time do you know what i mean um, and so the 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 environment is what grows you as leaders even as your business scales from you know eight people or whatever to 80 to 800 you know like you had you need different leadership qualities at each stage um, but you don't know that until you're in it. Um, so that's that's what, you know, so don't be be empathetic to yourself too, you know what I mean? Absolutely. All righty. I, yeah, I also know my qualities. This is a good, but you need to know both. You also need to know what you are not good at. Yeah, absolutely, yeah. right? Exactly true. So guys, what... If you had if you had the keys to the Matt Brown show, Time Machine, what would you do uh, differently? Martin, let's stick with you. Um, looking back, yeah. yeah. So, uh, I mean, probably moving to the US earlier, definitely. And it, again, it's, it's not blaming. It's just like uh, for us, it was the right decision and we should have done it earlier. 
On the other hand, we have a good timing now with the AI market, but that's just a coincidence. But uh, otherwise, uh, I would definitely do that earlier. And also, um, as soon as possible, complement my talents because uh, I need a COO. That's all I need. And then it's perfect. I just need somebody for, for the operations. And uh, many, many founders, especially when they are very confident or they feel very confident, um, they don't do that. They think they can do everything. And this is usually not the case. You can't be everything. It's not possible. And this sounds like an empty phrase, to be honest, but but it's not. Because in reality, it means like you really have to know who you need as a complementary um, team member. Mm, absolutely true. Uh, Max, what would you do differently and why? Uh, yeah, um, I, I agree with Martin on that. Um, I would also add that um, especially founders um, that have a lot of ideas and that are very visionary, like um, Martin and I, uh, you can get lost into in this uh, this idea space a little bit. And as Martin said, you, you need to identify who do you need right now to execute all of these ideas, put them into reality, turn them into products, turn them into revenue, uh, get all these processes lined up, and then uh, you can um, identify like how to do it in the, better in the future. Um, so what we also had, we, we had a very broad um, application, understanding humans. This is, this is a very broad application. It also opens up trillions of use cases, which is the good thing. The, the, the flip side is you have to focus. You have to think about use cases, think about business use cases, uh, turn them into, into something viable that businesses want to use and pay for. And this is exactly this transition that I think a lot of founders can get lost in, uh, especially when, when you have a lot of vision, but uh, you need somebody to really turn that into processes and execute. Um, and that's what I would probably also focus on, identifying who could th be that person uh, earlier, and then hmm. uh, that's what I would have done differently in the past. Mm -hmm. So, uh, Max, what's your advice to other founders and entrepreneurs out there today about the importance of, you know, going through these teaching moments, these, uh, you know, times of failure uh, where you are growing in the context of becoming successful and scaling companies? Yeah, I would say um, always reflect. Uh, Self-reflection is uh, one of the most important things um, ever. And this is also something that we wanted to initially do with our tool help people self-reflect on an ongoing basis. So basically after every meeting or milestone or success uh, or failure, um, reflect on your own personality. What could have you done differently? Are you really um, lacking some kind of personality traits such as a process oriented guy in a specific point in time, or are you lacking more of a leadership and management guy? Um, and what are you good at? What do you want to focus at? What motivates you? Because I think also a lot of founders, because you have to wear that many hats, you can get kind of lost into what you're doing in your daily life. Um, and when 80% of what you're doing doesn't fulfill you anymore, uh, it, it will have a negative impact on obviously your own mental health and also the success of the company as a consequence. So I would always uh, advise um, self-reflect on the ongoing basis and try to, um, yeah, optimize. Mm, absolutely. Good, at. good advice, man. Listen, Martin, what about you? What uh, What's your advice to other entrepreneurs out there? Yeah, um, be humble. I mean, uh, it's, it's great to be ambitious and everything. And the good thing is in, in, in the Germany, I would probably give another advice because people should be more ambitious. <laughs> and sometimes it's also good to be humble. And Germans tend to be, in, in my opinion, uh, in my uh, experience, uh, too humble sometimes. But sometimes it's good because um, you can't do everything. And this, it relates to what, what Max said, um, reflection, but also um, you don't need to do everything. Why do people have so much um, struggle or... Um, they, they feel pressure to to do everything themselves. And that's not how it should be because um, you're saying as a founder, I'm 24 seven responsible. That's true. Yeah. But your responsibility also means to um, step back for certain things and let somebody else do it. And this is so hard. Mm -hmm. I, I'm sure you can relate. You also, you talked about dictatorship almost, right? Yeah. So uh, I, I know exactly what you mean. And this is so hard because it's your baby and you, you know how to do that in your mind, but Usually, you can't execute from A to Z yourself. This yeah. is just not possible. In the, yeah, yeah, absolutely. 
Um, so guys, what about books, tools, and resources that you've read, uh, you know, uh, in, in your journey to date that you recommend to other entrepreneurs? Martin, let's stick with you for a moment. Um, yeah, I mean, I personally love to read stories of entrepreneurs. This is also why I love this podcast, honestly, because um, this is a good example of, of learning from others. And I personally always love to learn from experiences of others. So mentorships, when we came to the US, we had an accelerator connecting us with mentors. And also, I saw a lot of founders only trying to get investors, for example, from these mentors. They were only focused on, I need money right now, I need to raise. And then this was the only goal, but then you don't learn because you you, you still do the same like you did before. And this is just with another person. Mm. And this clearly doesn't work. I, I also something I learned the hard way. So you should you should definitely listen. Um, it's all, it sounds like an empty face, but it's really important to honestly learn something from other people's experiences. And it, it's always so mean. I, I, I always thought like when I listened to, listen to some, some mentors, I was always like, yeah, okay, they have these issues, but I will not have that. It's almost arrogant because I thought this is different than everything. But some things are really the same all the time and uh, we can all learn from, from others. And mm. This is my best advice. I love podcasts, stories, reading biographies, um, things like that. It's Beautiful. Um, Max, what about you? Um, yeah, uh, same. I've, I've been through the same programs like Martin, so I, I also appreciate it, of course, uh, talking to mentors, also talking to other founders. I think it's really important to stay connected, even if even if, even if you have zero business overlap and they do totally other, other businesses. It's so valuable to have this network and an ongoing exchange with other founders from other stages even, uh, and just having this exchange of, of, uh, of ideas. And also... Um, I mean, there are so many great resources uh, today uh, with with YouTube and all these uh, online uh, courses like Coursera and Udemy and everything. So I think nowadays it's really, if you're really interested in learning a skill, try to find the right people who can help you, um, mentor you, um, and then you have all these resources uh, at the tip of your hands and you can do it. Mm, amazing stuff well guys uh, thanks so much for being on the show love your story um love the uh, the ai idea that you guys are taking a market and building so uh, you know just wishing you all the very best of success as you guys scale thanks so much man it was, it was great being here thank you i love what you're doing yeah thanks anytime so dude and remember the book's coming out uh, this year guys just uh, just so you know um, so anyway thank you so much uh, max and martin for being on the show um and everybody else i will see you all again soon ciao